Hi, welcome to Avon. Today we're going to build the mini trebuchet kit. It's a nice easy build that'll be done in well under an hour and along the way I'll share some tips and tricks that'll allow you to build a kit that looks and works great. Let's get started. So first let's get all of our supplies together. Uh, first thing you're going to need is sandpaper. Uh, we're going to use 150 grit and 220. Uh, the 150 grit is for removing all the laser residue and any dirt or marks that might be on the wood and the 220 provides a nice clean finish it looks good feels good um, just uh, makes for a good kit uh, i use a sanding block uh, a sanding block is nothing special it's just an ordinary block of wood it can be a piece of two by four it can be any scrap you have lying around um, it allows you to keep your edges square and apply pressure evenly to the part uh, you're going to need some scissors and a uh, paper clip. And uh, in addition, uh, a pair of pliers uh, for working with a paper clip helps a little bit. Uh, not absolutely necessary. Uh, finally, uh, glue. I'm using this Lepage Super Glue or Crazy Glue. Uh, it works really quickly, it cures quickly, but you gotta be careful because it can also glue your hands together, glue your head to the table, glue parts to your leg. So just uh, go easy with it and uh, be careful. All right, uh, one final thing that we can use is uh, weight for the trebuchet. We're going to need some BBs or some fishing weight, anything that's dense and heavy that uh, is going to power the catapult or the, uh, the trebuchet, that'd be great. All right, these I think were about seven bucks at the hardware store and, uh, and they work just fine. So um, anything that's got a little bit of heft to it is, is going to power the, the trebuchet for us. All right, so let's go ahead and open the kit. Uh, you can just get rid of the plastic wrapper and uh, you're going to uh, set aside the instructions and then remove the cord, uh, the ammo and the axle from the, the carrier board. So there's the three pieces of ammo and the, uh, the axle is uh, embedded there as well. And yeah, we'll just set aside the piece of cord. Perfect. So now we have the two boards and we can start sanding. We're going to begin with the 150 grit sandpaper. I fold it in half, then cut it. And things are sped up a little bit here, but uh, you get the idea. Wrap it around the sanding block, nice and tight, and then start scrubbing the part. So I work mostly at about 45 degrees to the grain with the 150 grit. Just to clean it quickly, I use a, a reasonable amount of pressure and I'll just speed things up here as I uh, work over the entire board. So um, you want to do both sides of each board and taking a little bit of extra time to make sure that everything is clean and fresh and uh, nice and smooth, it, it makes a big difference in the finished kit. So once you've got the boards looking pretty good, you can just switch over to the, uh, the 220 grit. And again, we just need a half a sheet of that. Ammo was rolling away there. So yeah, we just need a half sheet of the 220 grit sandpaper. Just fold it in half, cut it with the scissors again. There we go. You can set aside the other half for another kit and wrap this nice and tight around the block. There we go. And again, just a nice light scrub on these parts. Uh, everything's already off of them. You're just applying a finish to them now and getting rid of any grooves from the other uh, sandpaper, from the 150 grit sandpaper. So I'm gonna clean up my work area here a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Now, everything is ready to go. And you can start by removing the, uh, the corner brace, the gantry upright, the side frame, and the base and uh, the gantry brace from the carrier board and we'll get those glued together. So once you've got the parts all out, um, you know, double check against the instructions to make sure you're getting the right parts. And uh, once you have them, it's always a good idea to dry fit or test fit the parts together. So you basically, without using any glue, you just stick the parts together, putting the tabs and the slots and making sure that all the parts are aligned properly so that when you go to glue, you don't make any mistakes. So, Everything looks like it's fitting together. I can take it back apart and go to town with the glue. So 
All the parts are marked with a letter on them. If you take a little bit of care, you can make sure that the marked side is hidden or, or facing away from anybody who's going to see the kit. It just makes the kit a little bit tidier and a little bit cleaner. So here that's the, the brace and now I'm going to glue the side frame to the, uh, to the base and then uh, the upright to, to, the, um, to the gantry brace. There we go. So a little bit of glue on the bottom of that. And all the pieces fit together nicely. And one side's done. We're about 12 minutes in. And now we can get the mirrored parts on the other side. So uh, an upright, a side frame, uh, the corner brace, and the, uh, the, the outside brace, and the gantry brace. So again, just making sure everything fits together, making sure that I understand how they go together before I start. And once I'm comfortable that I can get them together right, just go ahead and add a little bit of glue again. Oh, and you see I put it on the wrong side there, so I switch sides so that the letter faces down. Excellent. Okay, yep. Make sure I know where I'm putting the glue so I don't add glue where it shouldn't be. And we'll glue the brace in at the same time. So attach the brace to the side frame and glue the whole works down onto the base. Perfect. All right, so now we'll do the upright, a little bit of glue, apply it to the side frame, and place the gantry uh, brace in place. And the gantry brace goes right through the upright and into the side frame, so you know everything's locked and interconnected. So we're 15 minutes in, and now we can put in the, uh, the end braces. So these are the end frames and the, uh, the counterweight trough, or the, sorry, the, uh, the ammo trough. So the ammo trough um, snaps into the back of the uh, trebuchet, uh, it's resting on that end brace, and there's two pieces for the front brace. So everything looks good, we're ready to go ahead with our glue. We'll start with the front, um, do the piece that's got the tabs first, that goes on the bottom, it snaps right in there, and then you can glue the second brace right on top of that. Make sure everything's lined up nicely and uh, nice and flat. Then put the corner braces in, again, make sure that it's uh, uh, facing down. And make sure when you put that end brace in that the notch is facing up. That's really important. All right, so next we're going to get the trough pieces put together. And again, be a little bit careful about orientation. Be very careful about what that side, the marked side goes to. And you'll wind up with a nice neat kit. A little bit of glue on the bottom, a little bit of glue in the notch and we can stick it all together. Excellent. Well, we're making some pretty good progress. We're less than 30 minutes in, and it's time to do the uh, throwing arm. So the throwing arm has two cheek pieces, and they just get glued straight onto the throwing arm. You want to be careful to make sure that the holes in all three parts line up. So do a double check, stick the axle through, make sure it spins nicely, and then it's time to actually glue it in place. So before you add any glue, uh, slip the axle all the way through, leave a little bit poking out the side, and then add the glue on one side and the other, and just slip it the last way in. And you can add a little bit between the axle and the gantry brace, but make sure you don't get any on the throwing arm at all. So the throwing arm should move smoothly, and make sure that the orientation is correct as well. That's really important. Now, we're getting pretty close to the end here. We're uh, gonna build the counterweight. So there's a number of pieces here that we put together and um, we'll just get all the pieces out of the carrier board and then we can start. So we'll start by putting the, the hanger into the base and then the floor gets glued on top of that. The two end pieces attach to the floor. One side and again make sure that the marked sides are facing inwards on these and one on the other side and then you can glue the two uh, side places in so glue one side frame and that just sort of ties everything together and then before you glue the second side frame in do the uh, the top crossbar so it just slides all the way through and before you finish it just add glue where it's going to touch and slide it right into place. And then at last you can put the last uh, side frame on. 
a little bit of glue everywhere it's going to touch and you can just touch it up make sure that uh, everything's going to stay nice and sturdy so there you go so now uh, we have the counterweight built it's time to fill it with a little bit of weight so again um, just add a little bit of glue into the bottom and do a layer by layer so i'm just shaking them out here uh, tossing them in nothing too fancy nothing too take too long just put a few in put a little bit of glue a few more a little bit more glue there we go a little bit more on the other side yeah a couple got away and there we go yeah they hurt when they fall on the floor by the way not as bad as Lego but still all right, so a final coat of glue on top once everything's leveled out and it's not going to be sticking over the edge. And we'll clean up my mess, try and get them back in the bottle. All right, so we're less, still less than half an hour in. Um, I've printed off the counterweight cover from the, uh, from the website. You can go to abong.com and download this file. And it just has the outline there for the cover for the counterweight. So nice and easy, just cut it out. There's fold lines there. You can just mark it with your uh, with your edge of your scissors, and then cut out the square in the middle. And I'm just using a uh, uh, an exacto knife. You can use scissors. I just found this was a little bit easier. All right. So I've got the hole removed. And that just slides right over the top and glues in place. A little bit of crazy glue along the edges. There we go. Excellent. So everything's put together. The counterweight's ready to go. Uh, looks good. All right. So uh, next step, uh, we're going to be attaching the counterweight to the trebuchet frame. In order to do that, we're going to use some cord. And you'll notice that it's frayed. So here's a little tip. Uh, before you start using the cord, put a little bit of glue on the end of it. And it doesn't matter whether it's crazy glue or whether it's any other glue but uh, crazy glue just dries so much quicker. So uh, soak the end in glue, let it dry, and then snip it off. And what you'll find is you almost have a pin on the end of your, uh, on the end of your thread to be able to, uh, to move it through all the small holes. And it just makes your life a whole lot easier. So there's two little uh, clamping pieces that uh, connect the counterweight to the frame, to the throwing arm. So you're just threading it through one side to the other, then back around through, through the top, and back through the hole, the other hole in the other cheek piece there, the there, clamping piece. And then you're just tying a double knot nice and tight. So you want to get all the parts nice and snug together, tie a double knot, and then just to make sure that's never going to go anywhere, you just add a little drop of glue. Let the glue dry, give it a snip, and there you go. The counter, the trebuchet is ready to work pretty much. So we're uh, just over half an hour in, and so the rope for the trebuchet is actually attached right to the ammo in this case. So I'm going to thread at the end through it. There's a jig right on this small piece, as you can see and it sizes the string perfectly for throwing the, uh, the ammo the optimum distance. So I'm just uh, fiddling around here with my, uh, my big fat fingers to get the, uh, the knot tied. There you go. So one knot and we'll do a second knot. And then just like the other one, we'll add a little drop of glue. Trim it up. Perfect. And I like to uh, just rotate the knot so the knot's in the hole of the bead if you can fit it. This one uh, was a little bit of a sloppy knot. It didn't quite fit. We'll try to do better on the next one. So speed things up a little bit here. And tying number two. Double knot. Tidy it up. There we go. That looks much better. And the final one. And there's a little bit of extra string, so if you do make a mistake on one of them, you can always retie it, or if you want to get some extra beads. So 45 minutes in, everything's done, except for the trigger pin. So 
So the trigger pen is just an ordinary paper clip. Unfold it, snip off the short end. Excellent. You can throw away the other part and just form a little D into the end of the clip. And then you can trim off the, uh, once everything's nice and square there, you can trim off the excess. And you have just a little pin that, uh, that works as a trigger for the trebuchet. So let's give it a try. So hook the ammo over the end of the throwing arm, place it into the trough, stick the pin through the holes in the back of the trough and the throwing arm, and we're all ready to go. Aim, get it lined up, and fire. There it goes. Well, that's about it. I hope you had a great time building the kit and it turned out fantastic. I'm sure it did. Uh, if you have any suggestions about what we can do to make these videos a little clearer, or you have uh, comments, leave them below. And be sure to subscribe. We're always coming out with new kits and you're going to want to be the first to know. Bye for now.